What's going on YouTube and welcome back to another King Japes video. Now I'm really happy to say that street photography critiques are coming back to the channel. A series in which you guys submit your street photos and I critique them. This time around we had over 250 submissions. Which is probably the biggest submission kind of base that I've ever gotten. And so it was really hard to find a way to select the photos for this uh, for this episode. And so what I did was I went into the emails and I literally just started 10 random ones. And those 10 are the people and photos that we're going to be reviewing today. Alright, so for the first submission we have Agile Windehard. I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Sorry if I butcher it, man. Um, and this guy is from Indonesia. Alright, and here is the photo. First of all... Beautiful photo. I love the scene that you captured here. Um, you have the little boy walking on the train tracks. Reminds me almost like of a movie setting. But the biggest thing to me is the position in which he strides. And you did a great job, Agile, by you know capturing his stride when both of his legs are open and he's in the middle of his walk. The leading line of the train tracks did a really, really good job for your photo. So, Agile, great, great photo. I mean, if I were to say anything would improve i mean i can't really say much i noticed that there's another guy in the background there you know walking maybe if it was you know if he wasn't in that frame and it was literally just him kind of like an isolation trick for the eye i think that would work great as well but nonetheless you know just looking at this photo you did a fantastic job so agile winning hard great job on this photo man all right the next photo here is from oswaldo guadarrama i don't know if that's how you pronounce it again i'm sorry uh, but this photo right here in particular initially when you first look at it you really don't know what's going on so there's already that kind of mystery aspect to your photo but the biggest thing to me is the action and the isolation involved within the frame now the first thing i'm looking at here is of the of the character on the left side of the frame it almost looks as if it's first of all it's a female and she's trying to pull somebody's hand and then the hand is reaching away from the far right corner of the frame so really really great composition and i love how it's in black and white it almost looks like this was taken on film with a flash on in the middle of the night uh, and it has this very moving factor to the image. I mean, if you look at it, there's a sense of urgency, there's a sense of movement. Uh, and then the girl who is walking away out of the frame, pulling the hand into the frame, really just, you know, completes the entire composition. Great movement, great composition, great mystery, and just the black and white with the flash on looks amazing. So, Oswaldo, man, fantastic job on this photo. Seriously, I really like that one. All right, so the next submission we have is from Jack Collier. And uh, here is an image of somebody hanging off the side of a bus. Very reminiscent of something that you would see, you know, in an old history or photojournalist type of book. Uh, somebody's holding off the edge, waving at you. And I think it's an amazing scene that you captured. And a lot of the time in street photography, you'll hear that it's all about capturing scenes and it's all about capturing the moment. But really, I think it's mostly about timing. I mean, you time this shot perfectly, and I think that timing is one of the aspects of street photography that I feel like sets it apart from other forms, simply because we don't know exactly what we're going to capture when we go out there on the street. It's all about the intuition of when we pull the camera to our face and capture. So I think you captured a really good moment here. Um, the only thing that I would see you do differently, I mean, it depends on the lens or the camera that you were using. Maybe if I would have brought it in a little tighter, I think that would have, you know, maybe aided it in a little bit. But, you know, I think you did a fantastic job just simply capturing this moment and all of the timing that you had with it. So, Jack Collier, great photo, man. Keep it up, get a little bit closer, and you'll be on your way. So the next submission here is from John Pingel. This photo must have been taken with a wide angle lens. Simply just from looking at it, they captured the big tall structures of those columns. Um, but what I really like is that there is a very contrasty mood between the columns and the person walking. The first things first, the man, the security guard or the pilot, whatever it may be, looks like a security guard or policeman. He's wearing a white shirt with black pants, so he's very easy to spot against these columns that have these really straight, rigid lines going vertically. Negative space is a tricky thing to play with, especially because if you use it incorrectly, it could completely ruin your photo. But with the proper negative space and then the framing and the composition, you could really pull something off like this photo. And I think you did a fantastic job, man. Again, I'm serious about this. Um, really, really stunning photos. All right, now the next photo here submitted was from Kenyatta Marcellus. 
course. Now, first glance at Kenyatta's photo, great job with the composition. I love the leading lines from the street, and I also love the darkness he's walking into. Again, it adds sort of a mystery, um, which I really like. And if I could only say to point anything out, Kenyatta, maybe, again, just catching the person in stride. Um, I think he did a fantastic job, though. There's nothing really to me that is extremely distracting. I think the shadow on the bottom right side of the frame kind of adds almost a subframe to where exactly the person is going. Uh, but yeah, great photo, and I think it's a really simple but yet very pleasing composition. So Kenyatta, great job with that photo. All right, so the next photo here was submitted by Spockney, Instagram user S-P-O-C-K-N-Y. Immediately when I first seen this photo, the biggest thing that I've seen again was the negative space and the use of stairs. I'm a big fan of stairs and the staircases because in California, we don't really have too many vertical buildings. So staircases like this really, really attract me. Um, and to kind of see this scene, it reminds me of something out of a movie. And just the tones of the stairs, kind of on the left side, it has a darker, not vignetting effect, but you know, it gets darker onto the left side of the frame. Very, very cool frame. Again, use of negative space was really good. You have the leading lines of all of the railings. I think this is a fantastic photo. I mean, there's nothing really much say, um, to say about this photo, but Spockney, great job on this photo, man. Seriously, I'm jealous a little bit of these stairs tell me where it's at bro <laughs> next submission is from carlos corona and this photo here is a perfect example of usage of subframing subframing is framing a subject within a frame inside of your photo and i don't know if that is like a broken mirror or you know if it's just a ring or whatever it may be but the person that's inside of that frame is really, really cool. I don't know, you captured kind of a really classic looking person with the hat and just the, the bike bars. Tells a really interesting story. So great photo, immediately the subframe is what really killed this photo, it's awesome. Killed it in a good way. Carlos Corona, great job, crown dot photography. Seriously, good photo. The next submission is from Hannah Lidberg. And this photo, when I first saw it, was very confusing and I think you did a wonderful job with perspective. Now perspective when it comes to photos, when you look at this photo you're like okay maybe it's an upside down photo so you turn it upside down and then it still looks kind of funky and you're thinking to yourself like how did this person create this perspective? It's all within Hannah Lidberg's eye. Here's why I bring the camera out on these videos. When you're pointing up at something and you take a, there's like, you know, mainly two positions in which we position our camera when we're taking photos. It's usually, you know, what people call portrait, vertical, or horizontal as in landscape. The thing about the photo that she took here that I had to wrap my head around was that I think, if I'm not mistaken, these gates here are a fence or, or some type of gate. And then that these buildings, you know, are just, I don't know, standing there. But even till now, there had to have been some usage of Dutch tilt. What I'm thinking is shot this vertically, but tilted her camera a little bit. And when you look at the photo, the, the railings and the gates all have leading lines towards the buildings. Um, almost creates, again, another subframe. And it's in a really interesting composition. Photos like this where I can't fully comprehend it and I have to look at it for longer than 30 to a minute just to kind of understand what's going on are the photos that truly amaze me. And this is very inspirational because the use of perspective and just the way you saw and composed this photo was absolutely killer. I couldn't do this in a million years and I think you have a really talented eye. So Hannah Lidberg, amazing job with this photo. I really, really, really like this one. All right, you guys, the next photo is from Tommy Berezin. Uh, and it's a photo of somebody walking across the street on a crosswalk. And it's of a person with an umbrella. Now, here's the thing. Photos like this, again, that feel very lonely and have that isolated feeling really, really hit me because of the way that the person is hidden under the umbrella. You don't know who the fuck that person is. Great composition. I mean, the streets of the crosswalks, the contrast looks really good. Um, it does get a little busy with the stop, with the right turn only and the college street, the little street sign there. I feel like maybe if that wasn't there, the composition would have been, you know, maybe a little bit more clean. But nonetheless, I think you did a great job framing and capturing the essence of this scene again. Timing is important. 
Uh, you got the person in stride and then the person hiding under the umbrella. So great, great photo. Uh, and yeah, very inspirational. And last but not least, we have a photo submitted from Shama Al Ali. Now, this photo is of a building within other buildings. Again, kind of using that subframing technique. Great tones. Yeah, I think it's a really good photo and it works because, you know, you kind of have the contrastingness of sitting inside of that corridor and then having the tower subframed in between the two buildings. If I were to say anything about this photo, I would say that maybe change the perspective a little bit to where, you know, if it's possible to get that tower kind of centered in between the buildings. Um, you know, looking closely at it, I feel like it's kind of hidden behind the roof of the building on the right. But nonetheless, I mean, still a great photo. I love the tones and just imagine this photo as a printed photo hanging it on somebody's wall. I think it'd be a beautiful piece. So yeah, guys, that wraps it up for these street photography critiques. I'm gonna be 100% honest, you guys are extremely, extremely talented. Um, and it's really awesome to see your guys' work. So thank you to everyone who submitted. If I didn't get around to critiquing your photo this time, please do not feel bad at all. Um, a couple of different updates I have for the upcoming videos. I am now gonna go full time back into YouTube work and I'm gonna work on my zine more and I have a giveaway for the next video. So I hope you guys stay around for that. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in to another King James video. As always, Minolta Gang. <sighs>